Okay, folks. Good morning, Sunday morning. Final leg of these guys. We did a lot of painting yesterday. And we're now left with three. The Emperor, the Bugler, he who he who bloweth the horn, and uh, and the flag bearer. So Emperor's last, flag bearer next to last, Bugler's next. Man, this is a pain in the ass to open up. <laughs> this is the seal of seals. The Seal of Seals. Well, I did some painting yesterday, probably for about five hours. Something like that. Within a few minutes of five hours. And um, uh, I got a lot done. And it came back a couple hours later. And um, signed on and attempted to paint for 30 minutes and no one showed up. So I was like... I was falling asleep, so I'm like, okay, well, this didn't happen. And uh, went ahead and, and watched some videos over here on my computer. And um, that kept me awake. That finished the last two, um, the last two Varangian Guard guys. So we finished four guys yesterday. And um, we just need to do three today. And then we'll be done with these, with these folks, all of them. All of them for this ver for this version of the army. So let's um, let's get a little drawing up here. That way I'm not flipping between pages. And let's see. I should still have this up. It's almost like I need a second screen. And it's going to be inspired by Save Image As. Let's put it here. Okay. This is apparently, uh, this has got to be Angus McBride. But anyways, this is inspired by, um, apparently according to this, it's Emperor Basil II. And um, he's just a couple of years earlier than this, so... We're going to just kind of uh, assume that nothing major has changed. I like it. It seems to be appropriate. And um, we'll throw that on here. Properties. Yep. Browse. And done. Okay, and the, these two guys that are mostly unarmored are going to be inspired by that guy that's wearing the blue tights. Um, I think that should work. I think that should work all right. All right. And I have a little bit of a headache, a twinge of a headache, so we'll see how that works. Hopefully we can power through this. So, uh, let's see, is the metallic that we have over here okay? There's the drippings. Is the metallic okay? Let's test it out with this. This actually was working okay in a little, a little dry brush area yesterday. Because this guy has what appears to be chainmail on his arms. Heraclius the Hornblower.
I think I've painted one horn before. And it's an opportunity to use some gold, which is usually a color I don't use very much, or, or something shinier in the uh, yellow metal department that is brighter than, um, you know, like the regular bronze that I use, brighter than this color. It's just an opportunity to do something a little bit different. So that's kind of cool. It's going to have red capes. Um, both of these guys are going to have red capes. The Emperor is not going to have a red cape. The Emperor will have a blue cape and kind of a light blue cape. Well, you see it right there. That's that's kind of how we're, what we're going to go with. So um, it looks like everything this guy is wearing is like a blue. Now that blue, I've got a blue that's almost exactly like that. Let's go pull. Let's put our glasses on so we can see where the hell it is. But uh, I pulled it out yesterday. I want to say. I think it's this one. This is damn near. It doesn't look like it. This is a weird blue. It's called pastel blue, and you look at it here, and it looks like it's more than pastel blue, but it's it's an old it's an old paint color. I hope the same vendor that is at Historicon has those foundry pots. And I want to say it's um shit. I can't remember who it is, but they have a big display area. That's what I should pick up instead of a freaking um, Windsor and Newton brush. Those foundry pots are pretty expensive. The set of three is like I think like twenty bucks or something like that. I'd rather have one of those. I'd rather have a set of three of one of those than than a brush that probably won't work. That won't work to everybody's. Uh... See, this is the right color, but it's just too damn dull. It's just too dull and uninspiring. All right, what else we got up here? Because we can make that color. We can make that color using something like this. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make it. Because once a color is, it's, it's, it's hard to give it more color than what it starts off with. It's kind of a dull. We're going to use this blue. Well, hold on a second. Let me think about this. We're going to save this one for the cape. Okay. We are going to use this color. I don't want these guys to overshadow the emperor. You never want to overshadow the emperor. Well, hopefully we get some folks on here today. If not, I'll turn the feed off and I'll watch things off in the background there. I watched several of your recommendations that we talked about yesterday. And, uh, ooh. Headache is going away. If there's one day I don't need a headache, it's today. Well, I don't need one tomorrow either. Tomorrow would actually be worse. Tomorrow would actually be worse. I 
that's all that's showing on there. This is a gladiator figure. And honestly, a bit on the rustic side. The gladiator figures are definitely from a different a couple of different sculptors. A lot of people rave about a guy named, I believe his first name is Jeff Ackman. And um, lots of people are fans of those figures, uh, including myself. But this is not by Jeff Ackman. Or if it was, he decided to sculpt them in a totally different manner. Good morning, Mike B. You, um, are you in the States? Are you going to Historicon? I haven't encountered, I don't think anybody on my feed that's going to Historicon. Well, okay, other than the, other than, than Randy and Joe who, you know, they game with us. Let's see, so am I going to put the bottom level a little? Yeah, I think I am, I think I am going to do that. I think I am going to do that. Let's, um, this guy's got a sword out. He's some kind of an officer. Let's, um, what are we going to call that? Let's get, it's definitely going to involve this color. And do you have a dark brown? Yeah, but honestly, I think I'm going to use like a dark, dark red. Let's see. This color here. Honestly, I just, I really want to, it's, I don't want to buy anything. There's nothing I'm like excited to buy, but I do want to spend a lot of time in the vendor hall looking through shit just to see if there's any new products. Hopefully there's somebody there that does like some 3D stuff because that's, that stuff is hard to find on the internet. Can't make historic on this year. Okay. Just a lot of people not making it. Well, I can't imagine not many people made it last year. With it being moved to November, I can't think of a worse month for me than November to not make a con. If you want me to not show up at a convention, do it at a convention in November because I won't be there. That is the worst month. All right, let's let's see if I don't screw this up. So we're going to put a little band here towards the bottom. And this figure is inspired by the leftmost figure there in the picture. Flea market. Yeah, exactly. Well, the flea market is good because sometimes you can find things that aren't available anymore. Not necessarily, you know, a steel. Although a steel's, you know, kind of hard to leave there. But the problem with the flea market is you just never know when the thing you're looking for is going to be is going to show up. You know, and fortunately. Knock on wood. The stuff I'm looking for, most people aren't interested in. You know, I'm not looking for painted armies. As a matter of fact, oh, painted army, who cares, right? Um, I'm looking for, you know, if somebody has like a bunch of, like, I don't know, irregular figures that they don't like. That, that's, that's my kind of thing. I'm the idiot that wants to buy figures that nobody uses. Um, but hopefully they have a lot of 3D printed stuff on there because, um, damn it, that's what I forgot to go on there. I forgot to check out Dungeon. I think the name of the company is Dungeon Forge. I don't know. I did an unboxing on their stuff. You'd think I would remember, but RAM is full at this point. Uh, I'll put on here Dungeon Forge. Check it out. So, yeah, that's what happened yesterday. I came back about uh, a little later. Uh, Dirk was in mid-sleep about that time. You like that, huh? You like the the shields? Well, well, let me show them to you. It was um, I really wanted to do anim animalistic figures for all of them, and then I was having a cogitation problem. Like, how about we just go black and red, and um, and just do that? And if I seal these guys and really really hate it, which is unlikely, it's unlikely I will really really hate them. 
they're gonna, they're going to work just fine. They're going to work okay. But uh, I couldn't just spend a lot of cogitation time on them. And um, remember, these are like Varangian uh, version one. Um, the ones that are in the Comnenian list, they're all going to have individual shields and they're going to be fancier and stuff like that. Those guys have axes. So, all right. I got to pay attention here. What the hell am I going to do? I'm going to pretend that there's like some inscriptions or shit on them. Okay. But, um, I saw, I, so anyways, I came back about two o'clock. I stopped about one. I, no, I came back about three. Went out to lunch with my brother and my mom. And, uh, I knew we were going to get together with them later. Later, we ended up watching the Thunderball. That was the next one on the, and I don't know if it was the, if it was the four glasses of whiskey or we were just having a good time enjoying that, picking at the movie and stuff like that. So far, it's the. Well, we're watching all the Bond movies in order, and so far that's the best one, by far. It's, you know, not even close. So, um, and then, it, you know, it got too late to watch the second one. We were going to watch two yesterday. But anyhow, um, I digress. Um, two ah. Uh. Two ah. Uh. Yo, whoa. Two ah. Uh. Okay. <laughs> I don't speak that language, but thank you. <laughs> what kind of inscriptions are in this on this thing? Uh, just a freaking, just a freaking design. All right, um, let's go thinner than that. But anyway, so about three o'clock, I come back on, and like I'm I'm on there thirty minutes, and no one showed up, and I'm like I'm I was literally falling asleep. So I took that time to go ahead and watch videos, which I don't usually do, but I found some things to watch, uh, some tank chats from uh, uh, Bovington, et cetera, that I could have over here playing, and it kept me awake, and I was able to power through and finish the last two guys. So um, I did. they had to be done yesterday. They had to be done yesterday because um, this is pretty much where I needed to be in order to not finish these guys in a, in a, in a massive crunch. Cause the emperor is going to take a while, but I've got a pretty good idea of how, what I want him to look like. So that's, that's important because one of the things that really consumes time is where you're like, ah, uh, mm, well, let's see. I don't. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, the back and forth. You know, analysis paralysis is just really a time consumer. Ian Wright, welcome. The other, also known as the other person that doesn't like. What is it that you don't like? You don't like Kelly's Heroes either. I think. You and me, we're the only ones. Hopefully, I get the person right. I need to. Like, write notes down here. <laughs> All right. So I watched a couple videos yesterday. The, the guys that did the videos on Joy of Six. That was interesting. That was interesting. And one of the videos, what, what really struck me is that the person commented that um, there's hardly any vendors that do six millimeter in the United States. And then here there was a whole bunch of them. And that's pretty cool because I feel like when I go to Historicon, there's like nothing in 15 millimeter either. I'm not really into six millimeter. Well, actually, I'm not into it all, but I was at one point. You know, I started off doing micro armor and things like that. But that was late 80s, early 90s. And I mean real early 90s, like, you know, after, before 90, 92. Managed to finish your Spanish baggage today. Ah. 
How many figures are in a baggage? Because you guys have... You guys have camps, right? You guys have camps and you have baggage in DBMM? Oh, you don't like Firefly. Okay. All right, well, we can still be allies. <laughs> I, I got to try to watch it again. I just don't like Fillion. You know, he might be a nice guy in real life. I just don't, I just don't like his, you know. God, what do, what do I dare do with this? Well, for starters, I need to pull some of this shit out. Because that's, that's maybe not so watery. And I already got a mixing ball in here. But some of these colors, just they're just not going to behave. So let's take some of this goodness. And put it down here. You would have gone to Joy of Six when my health isn't up to... I honestly, I never heard of it. Uh, I shouldn't say that. Um, I I heard Joy of Six, and I thought of this company that makes things in six millimeter. That's called I think Two D Six or something like that. I, I want to say they're almost like a three D printing. I don't know. I I came across them the other day because I was looking for. I was just surfing around looking at six millimeter figures for I don't know Renaissance or some shit like that. And I came across them. So that's what I... Th I put those two things together. But... That's pretty cool that they have their own con. And, and a lot of this stuff looked really, really nice. Um, I am definitely influenced by what things look like. Oh, shit. This guy's going to outshine the Emperor. I'm going to have to one-up the Emperor. This is actually turning out really well. Thanks to the brush... Um, a lot of those boards look really, really good. But that's a one-day show, and I guess that's a common in the UK is having a one-day show. And I've never been to a show that's one day. And Historicon's really a five-day show. Well, it could be, depending on, you know, how you plan it. Is it four for us? Well, let's see. Wednesday night. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, I guess it's a four-day show. Sunday we leave. We leave at 5 a.m. and hopefully get back the same day. We've been able to do it every time. With a hoarse voice. Let's do something in between these. This is probably a bad idea, what I'm doing, because I'm going to have to one up with the Emperor. That's the problem with some of these castings that are like really bland, like many Essex castings, etc. Um, you just find that you need to do something to them, and then it's kind of a, like a blank canvas. You can do a lot with it. I don't know if that's going to turn out okay on the on the on the video. We're going to leave that alone. We're going to leave that shit right alone. Now, let's be careful we don't mess up what we just did.
Yeah, I had never heard of, of uh, Joy of Six. But even you guys' big shows, um, which I can't remember what the hell it is right now, what it's called. But it's I think it's just a one-day show. But that would be okay. The thing is, is you know, it, it seems like all the stuff that they do for shows in the UK, the stuff's a lot better painted than the US stuff. And, you know, there's exceptions to stuff, but, you know, the UK stuff, it looks really, really good. And I'm definitely motivated slash captivated by that, you know, by, by the quality of, of things like that. Stuff in the war games, magazines. Okay, I think we're going to leave this as is. Red cape is next, and we want to use the scarlet one, which is the brighter of the, it's the more orangey of the ones, which is right here. Uh, 15 figures plus 10. 15 figures? Holy crap. Message me a pic. Okay, I'll have to check that out later. 15 figures. Chickens? Spanish don't eat chickens. You know the only time Spanish eat chickens? They run into pork. Sacabo. <laughs> we have to eat chicken. <laughs> pork. What's well, that? Like a some guy was on a lawnmower. Quarter to six on a Sunday. Jeez. Salute. That's what it is. Salute. Biggest UK show, but I think it's always been a one day show. Colors used to be a two day, but now it's only one. Okay, and salute is held where? Just north of London, a little bit. And you guys can get on trains and stuff like that. I'm not necessarily opposed to public transportation, but um, you can't really use public transportation for the most part in this country because you're going to come in contact with people that um, are not in your best interest to come in contact with. So public transportation, maybe in Europe, is a little bit different, but here, el pollo loco. <laughs> so like, I would not want to ride on a bus. I would not go want to go on a bus ride in this country because uh, I've I've been in one and actually seen like the bus had to pull over because there was fights and stuff on it. I mean, it's just I'm talking about grown ass people getting into fights, not, you know, adolescent kids on a school bus, you know. Yeah, you don't need that. It's like a freaking moving reality show. But trains, trains are cool. I like trains. Part of the fun of conventions is hanging out for three to four days. Yeah, I like a convention where you're like, you know what? I need to go home. I'm tired of talking. Like, I don't want to talk to people anymore. I don't mean that. I, it's not like I want to be antisocial. It's that my vo voice is hoarse. But maybe I've gotten a lot of practice on here to, to do that. I like to be alone, you know, I want, I want to be alone, not uh, with somebody next to me the whole time. Not that Mitch is any trouble. I'm just saying that, you know, 
I'm fine being alone. Some people don't like being alone. Like, I'm lonely. I, I always got my head full of stuff. I'm always thinking about shit. So. The girls are gone, so I've got to do packing. It's unlikely I'm going to get to any of it today. Unless I've got some downtime. Between things. But I did make a list. So all I got to do is just follow the freaking list. And, uh, and talk to myself while I'm doing a list. Make sure I don't forget something. Thank you, Jesus. What day do I leave for Pennsylvania? About 5 a.m. Tuesday. So, the problem is, is that we're about 14 hours away. That's actually not the problem. The problem is the conventions on the back side of Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Um, and for those of you who do not know, that is two high traffic, insane hell holes. Um, and to leave at 5 a.m., if you leave before 5 a.m., you, you have to go to sleep at some ridiculous time to stay awake. Okay, so 5 a.m. is really... Well, if you leave at 5, you still have to wake up at 4. So any earlier than that is just like, there's no reason to do that. And if we drove straight to Pennsylvania, which we do we do on the way back, but on the way there, you encounter both D.C. and Baltimore during rush hour traffic. Okay? And, uh, and we generally put on a game uh, on Wednesday night. So you can't leave on Wednesday and have that game as well. So... The alternative is, is we leave on Tuesday, do something along the way, and then leave from that midpoint early, and then we get around that traffic. Well, we usually avoid those two cities coming in from the west, but um, I don't know if we're going to do that this time. So like one year we went to, um, and that's assuming we're driving up, one year we went to... Um, Gettysburg, and the last time we went to Fredericksburg on the way. And um, now when the convention was in Fredericksburg, we would just drive straight there. You know, we would, we would uh, leave at 5 a.m. and we'd get to Fredericksburg about 3 um, and still put on the game. But when they moved it back to uh, Lancaster and we're driving up... Um, we have to basically leave on a Tuesday and do something along the way. So this year, or actually last year is what we were going to do it, but they didn't have the show. Um, we're going to hit, we're going to go to North Carolina and hit the battleship. So, but we need to hustle to get there because the place is only open till five and then we'll stay in the middle of North Carolina somewhere. And then we'll leave first thing in the morning uh, on Wednesday from the middle of North Carolina. And depending on how bad traffic is, we'll either go around, we'll go around the, the cities to the west. It's a lot extra, a lot of extra mileage. Or just hold your breath and go through them all, both. It's just unfortunately that, unfortunate that they moved it on the other side of, um, of the D.C. and in Pennsylvania, but all I heard was people complaining, it's too far, I gotta drive four hours to it. I said, dude, we've always had to drive upwards of 10 hours to the damn place. You know? What are you complaining about? 
because there was many years in Fredericksburg, and I, I think that, you know, my only gripe about that location is that it's really noisy. It was all one big building, and, and it had, you know, like a warehouse floors, and it just ends up being like a drone, like really busy at an airport. By the end of the, by the, end of the convention, you're like, okay, I want to leave because, you know, there's a whole lot of background noise that you're constantly hearing all the time. But DBA is not a very loud game. In other words, we're not, we're not having to have somebody try to explain shit over the sound of the drone or anything. So it's not too bad, but... It was kind of the same situation that we had in Tampa. Our convention was in Tampa for many years. And um, the place they were having in Tampa was literally a hellhole. And it was in a very shady area. You couldn't step outside at you know, night and do anything there. Not that I want to. I'm just saying it wasn't in a, in a, in a grand location or anything. And then we decided to find another venue... It was in Orlando. All the people that had been staying at the convention for free because they lived in the Tampa Bay area were so against it changing. They're like, well, I'm not going to go. And several of them never went. So it's like everybody, the rest of us are spending uh, spending uh, on a hotel no matter where it is because they're not going to hold it in my town. And the other people that have gotten basically a free ride weren't willing to, to, to drive to Orlando, which is, you know, an hour away. It's very close. And... Um, and go there, but oh well, that, that's their problem. If you're going to have a convention anywhere in Florida, Orlando's where it needs to be. That's where the air service is, it's central to everything else. You can do other things while you're there that families are interested in. The list goes on. That, that's the place to hold it in Florida. You know, if you want people to travel from out of state. I hope it never goes back to the host. Um, if it went back to the host, I don't know if I'd go. The In, to, in 2018, it, my experience at the host was so bad. You know, it's not like I got molested in the bathroom or anything like that. I'm just saying that the place was just, it should have been condemned. And, and it wasn't. <laughs> And um, I don't want to go back. I don't, go, I don't want to go back to it. Okay. We have a couple hands showing. This guy's totally miscast. He's supposed to have his hand over the sword end, and he doesn't. It's like the hand disappeared. Now, we'll have to paint something on there, because I'm not going to green stuff the, that thing on there. Let me put him on the stand. We'll try to hide that hand a little bit. I just noticed that. Sculptor issue. Let's add some touches of black where we're... That basing is missed. So that's the plan anyways. I really would have liked to do Aberdeen Proving Grounds. I've never gotten a chance to go, so I can point out all the stuff that's wrong on the tanks they have there. But... Um, but I never, never got a chance to, and now they've been moved. And we tried to track them down last year that we went, and they're not there anymore. They're, they're, a lot of them got moved to a place called Fort Lee, Virginia, supposedly, which is on the outskirts of Richmond, which we have to go right by. But the place isn't open to the public, and it looks like it may not be open to the public in the future, which is a shame. you got all these World War II vehicles, and I can't check them out. There's also a... World War II Vehicle Museum in a place called Danville, Virginia that looks really cool, but it's only open on Saturdays, Mon uh, Fridays and Saturdays. Well, that'll never work 
you know, because we're passing through there either on a Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday you could get away with, and it's not open on either one of those two days, you know, so, oh well. It'd just be nice to do something along the way since you do have to burn an extra day to stay in a hotel, etc., so. But I'm looking forward to staying at, at the at the venue. Should be pretty easy just to go up to your room. And that new location is exactly how it should be. As far as um cleanliness etc that place is that place is pretty nice it's a civilized place and it's not that you know I need to stay at the Ritz Carlton but I shouldn't I don't need to say in the freaking slums that has been bombed You vacation in Charleston this May. It's 12 hour drive from Ohio. Had time to kill on Sunday before we could check out Found Calpin's Battlefield on the way. Fallen is back of the host. Well, Fallen, Fallen is um, in the wrong time of the year for me. Um, that's, a, a, yeah, that's too close to anniversary and, and, and Cold Wars is too close to our recon convention, so. Historicon is the only one that I plan on ever going to up there. Um, Charleston's another place we could have gone. It's just not far enough away. Because um, they've got that, uh, what is it, Patriots Point over there? You've got the, they got the Yorktown there. They've turned it into a museum. But we'd have to go there spend the day and then drive a little bit so we get you got to get into North Carolina you don't want to start your travel in South Carolina and encounter traffic and show up to the convention late well hopefully they don't move the historicon back to the host I, I don't think I'd go I'm not really interested in going and it's basically the venue it, it's not really that part of town that part of town is just fine They've got that brewery across the street. That's kind of nice. It's a little farther than the Irish place next to the the convention downtown. But I don't I don't mind the location. Um, I just don't want the venue. And I, I've never stayed at the host, so I can only imagine how much worse it would be. But I'm just talking about the last time we were. It was. It was under destruction. We literally pulled up to the show, and had the f the face of the ho of the hotel was like covered in like plastic, like a crime scene. So that's that's something I'd rather not get into. And it's not that I don't need something really fancy, but you know we work too hard to have to put up with bullshit like that. You know, I want a place that, you know, if my wife went, it was, she wouldn't be embarrassed to stay at. I mean, you know. Because I'll sleep wherever if I have to, but. Things you don't have to worry about at a one-day con. <laughs> you don't have to stay at the... 
at the place. And then you can't you can't just go to the vendor hall at, at the host in between sessions. It just takes you too long to get there and come back. And I'm a fast walker. I can hustle. It's just it's just too far. By the time you get there, if you walk there and walk back, you've burned twenty minutes. And you haven't even seen anything. And then they change the doors to the back side. You gotta go all the way around the building to come in. So if you want something that's all the way on the front side of the building, you got to go all the way to the back of the building, walk in and walk. It just takes too much time, you know, between games and stuff. I don't necessarily mind the walking. It's not an issue. But it's like, man, I, okay, I got 15 minutes. What can I do? Nothing. You know? Well, it's all good. At least you know what the... What it involves before you make your decision and show up there and it's not what you think it is. And I'm okay missing one. I hadn't missed one since 2006. I'm gone every single one. Historicon. And then once they stopped having one, I didn't go to one. I'm like, all right, I can unclench now. You know? Because I've been threatened with possibly not being able to go next year. Because of um, taking a trip across the pond, but... I don't know if that'll happen or not. I'm honestly not that interested. They've made that type of travel really inconvenient the last couple of years. I'd rather just wait till it all blows over. And if it doesn't blow over well, I'll see you guys on uh, Google Earth. Okay, this guy's going to be, is this hair or let, we're going to say this is hair. We're going to say this guy's has hair. We still have any of this bronze alive we do all right this is going to be the the hand guard on the sword and i think i see a buckle here let's do the buckle in the same color all right so we're going to need more of that because we've got 
What other gold colors do I have? I mean, I know I've got gold. I got a couple different shades of gold in here. I got an antique and a bright and all this, this, that, and the other. What have we got here? Is it just these two? I got gold and old gold. All right. We're going to paint his trumpet in old gold. Do I have a third one? Let's see. I hardly use these colors at all. And now it's time for the fancy jokers. And the metal. So we're going to brighten up the sword a little bit more with the mithril silver. Bloweth the horneth. Start with bronze. DBA is all but dead in Ohio, isn't it? I think the last year that the Ohio contingent came to Historicon in any numbers to play DBA was the year before they moved to King of Prussia, which would have been 2009. <laughs> I knew a few guys from the Ohio group that came and did their thing. Wait for this set. We're gonna null no. Oh, so there's something that this came with, and I, I didn't know there was a, a instruction manual that came with the uh, with this set. My brother didn't tell me about it, and I didn't ask. I didn't assume that it had one. And um, where all the extra? Where are the extra things that it came with? I'll put it right here on top, but I could be wrong. Oh, I thought it was right here. I wouldn't have brought it up if I didn't have it here. But it had like this container, I didn't know what it was for, and it was for, um, supposedly, for, I keep looking in the same place, but it's not there. I need to reorganize this. I've got this dead zone here in front of my bookcase that I, I can't get to. I wonder where that was. But anyways, it was a little, it was like a little container you can put your pots in so you don't accidentally knock them down. And I was going to try that and put null oil in there so I don't knock it down. But Oh, well. Good thing my room's fairly organized. Or 
Some folks would never find shit in their place. I've seen the pictures. They scare me. They scare me. All right, this guy, we're going to go ahead and do this guy's hair. And... Um, Some color like this would probably be okay. Anyways, it comes with like these little, almost like, I thought it was like places to mix paint. But it's actually a place you can drop these, these little pots into. And keep them from, from falling over as easy. I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know where I put all the extra stuff. That's probably where those extra papers are too. Oh, well. Did you see D Games Workshop reformulated known oil? How long ago? I bought mine a couple of years. I don't know. I bet it doesn't, does it work? I, well, you said grr, so it probably didn't work the same way. I'm going to say it again. One of the things I love to say. Why are always people fucking with things? That's one of my sayings. I, I work at a job that is extremely volatile. And that almost makes it sound like somebody's violent that's going to show up. But no. It, there's a shitload of changes and there's nothing I can do about it. It's just in the construction industry and it's just how it is. So I sure as hell don't want any of that crap in my hobby time, which is, you know, therapeutic or supposed to be therapeutic. Um, maybe everybody does it as well. Vallejo has done it with a color called green ochre and, and it's slightly different. Just now this week. Yeah, why I always give why you gotta be fucking with things? I already in other words, I already get paid for enough challenges. I don't need to do challenges for free. Alright, I haven't had any coffee this morning on purpose because I had a headache and it might be a little dehydration-ish. So now we're gonna have coffee. I'm literally just gonna pour this and I'll be right back. sure games workshop is a company that's got our best interest in i mean i get it you're trying to run, you're trying to run a businesses but there's there's some way there's there's ways that i just don't agree with running businesses and the main thing is is like all right everybody get into this new game system we have it's awesome we'll put stuff on everywhere we'll support it and three years later tumbleweeds and they've done that through me three times, and luckily, I only got involved, I only got partially involved once. So, for those of us that, uh, you know, have jobs and, and don't paint all the time, and it takes us a while to get things painted, I don't, it may take me three or four years to get geared up to do something, and then they stop discontinuing their product. What, why, why should I support them? You know, um, fortunately, they don't get any historicals. 
you know. Alas, you have to go into the office tomorrow. Man, you remember how to get there? <laughs> I thought you didn't go in at all, but this is probably a... Um, it's probably a... Um, an unusual event for you anyways, so... Uh, we will... Um, bedtime. Well, I should be on later this evening. So maybe we'll see you then, but we'll catch you soon, Dirk. And I'll check out that picture you sent me. So. Well. At least Games Workshop isn't involved in stuff that I know of. You haven't bought any Games Workshop products since 1989. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to play Dark Future. They stopped continuing. I may not have liked Dark Future, but, you know, I... Oh, we don't have that anymore. What about Man of War? Oh, we stopped making it. What about the Epic game? Nope. Stop making that, too. I'm like, F you. <laughs> um... I mean, I've always liked their stuff because of the marketing and stuff they do do with it, you know. But I was about to say, at least they're not involved with politics. Hopefully, they're not involved with politics. Companies shouldn't be involved in politics, no matter what what your slant on the politics are. Just make your product, man. You know. You like their paints. I do too. The the new the the new ones. I mean the original ones. I still have some. They're great. Um, I wish they still made them. Um, I know that the coat the arms thing. I think is the same one. You just can't get those here in the United States. Um, I think I picked some up at Emperor's Outpost, in in Tampa, is where I have the. You know Emperor's Outpost probably closed around ninety seven something like that. 97, I don't, I don't know if they made it to 98, but we used to go down there and, and, and go on road trips. But I, I love their paints, you know? And then they went to those other pots that were kind of the hard plastic and just didn't seal worth a damn. And um, I stopped using them for a while. And the, and the ones they have now are great. You know, they're the traditional, um, these ones that are more of a, you know, at least the cover is, is rubberish, so you get a good seal. I think I think they're great paints, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys in the UK, you guys use the foundry paints? Are they... It, it looks from an uninformed observer, based on the size of their paint pots and everything, that those would be similar to the old school... Um, Citadel paints um, are they or are they just something totally different the the foundry triads and stuff and the only reason I'm saying that is there's someone at well they've always been there I, I don't know if they're gonna be there this time but they always sell those there um, and I can't remember who the name of the company is it's a it's a pretty well-known company or it used to be um, a, a vendor that sells the the foundry triads I may pick some of those up and I mean like two three sets like browns or something like that you never can have too many browns you just ordered some more coat the arms paint yesterday those are now i don't like their design of their pots because their lids are faulty in that they break here uh, at the hinge and the tab breaks other than that they're fucking stellar I mean, I I love these paints. They even smell nice. And no, I'm not huffing them. But I'm just saying you open them and they have a nice... I love them. Absolutely love them. They're from the same factory as the old Citadel paint. Same with Coat the Arms. Okay, so foundry paints are the same as the old Citadel paints. as the same as the old Coat of Arms. Then I will use them. 
you love the foundry brass triad. I, uh, yeah. This color is great. Um, where is she? Oh, F it. Let's pull it out. Thanks for coming on, folks, and waking my ass up. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got some that are unopened, like this one. Look at this. Shadow gray, unopened. I don't know why I bought two of them. I never opened one of them. Um, where's my mithril silver? My mithril silver is still kicking. It's a gorgeous color. No, this is chain mail. I don't know why I kept it. It's dry as shit. I just, for, for old school's sake. Uh, here it is, mithril silver. This is a beautiful color. Use it on armor and cannon barrels. Well, oh, th thanks for that bit of information. If that person is there, Brigade Games. Brigade Games is the name of the f of folks. And they have everything in 28 mil, which to me is like, not in not interested. Not going there. And, um, but they did, they did have, I don't know if they were at Historicon last year, time. They had a Historicon. I don't mean last year in 2019, but they're in 2018. They have a big display. I think it's Brigade Games. It sounds right. Um, this is, it, it's beautiful. It, it, it's, well, you guys know, you like them. It's almost like it's got some lubrication in it that it just flows really well. But at the same time, it's, it's heavy on the pigment. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. I was on a forum one time, and I, I'm i pretty vocal on here. I don't post really vocal things on online forums, because then you have to defend yourself. And, um, and it's hard to, to get the point across when you're typing things, okay? Because you don't have inflection, and you don't have, you know, you can't quantify things as well as through the spoken word. And somebody had made a post about Citadel paints. And I basically told them that I used to love them. And I still have some of them. And they they switched over to the new... It's, it's, they switched over to these pots and it don't work. And it's almost kind of like... I've got paints that are... I mean, these things are 30 years old, right? 2000, yeah, they're 30 years old. It's like almost like, man, we need to sell more paints. So let's go to these... You know, the little hard pots, the ones that were the were hard on the bottom and hard on the top. And the guy was like, I just said something like that. And the guy's like, you don't need to do any games workshop batching. And I'm like, well, fuck this. I'm leaving this for him. <laughs> hey, this is the first thing I've ever posted. And you get like ousted by that. I'm like, this isn't the place for me, you know. I just like call when people when people have a good product. I like telling people, hey, this product is great. When people have quality control issues. And things were going fine, and all of a sudden, the next thing you know, they make a subpar product. People need to know. People need to know that, hey, you know, you're going to run into trouble if you encounter this. Now, you can still use it if you want, but here's what I encountered. And if you're not allowed to talk about shit like that, well, you can do that in America. Or you used to be able to. You don't have to be nasty about it, but, you know, that's why I've always said, and I've never... Nobody's ever encountered me to want to sponsor me. I'm not interested in being sponsored because if that sponsor starts making sh sh bad stuff, you know, I want to be able to talk about it. I mean, I don't need to, you know, call them a, anything but a, you know, call them you know, bad language or anything. But, you know, if people have quality control issues, they have quality control issues. You know, they need to be addressed. So... Every place has quality control issues. And um, people want to know about them. People need, to, people need to know about them.
Well, it's, that's good to know about the um, the foundry um, pots. I'll make it a point to buy some. And I'll keep my eye out for coat the arms. I'm not going to find anybody that has them. And I don't mind rebuying them. But it's really hard to buy new paint colors that you can't physically like shake and look at the bottom of the of the of the of the thing because you know what what you see on the computer is not going to be an accurate representation of what the color looks like and sometimes looking at the bottom of the pot doesn't either you know um but Yeah, I like the I like the Vallejo and the um, and the coat the arms as well, and I like the coat the arms better than the Vallejo. I really do. I just don't have a sor I don't have a source for them that I can you know walk up and pick them up kind of thing. I think. Um, What's the name of that? Scale creep. I think scale creep in the United States carries um, coat the arms. Very rich colors. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Can't, can't say enough stuff. So despite the, the hinge design being crappy, it still seals. You know, it's not like this paint goes bad. So, very, very minor inconvenience. Very minor inconvenience. Every, every, um, type of bottle has a problem. Every type of bottle has a problem. The viejos are great until there's a jam. You know, then you got to unclog it or take it apart and scoop some of it out. But when the Vallejos came on the scene, I found out about them. They're the only ones that were in the eyedropper. And I'm like, ooh, that's great. I won't waste as much paint. Or, you know, I won't keep, I don't keep it open while you get some out and then it dries, some of it dries uh, inadvertently on you. Yeah, I don't know that Games Workshops involve any politics. Hopefully not. No company shouldn't be involved in that. Just stay out of it. Or you guys are supposed to turn, like, make money. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Make money ethically, right? Because I'm not opposed to, you know, people making money. That's what they need to be for, for. But, you know, you can't... Don't go and be selling shit to our enemy kind of crap, you know? But I picked up some tufts from Games Workshop. I was going to buy them, and I saw, oh, they're made in China. Why are they made in China? I mean, that's one of the things about Games Workshop stuff. It's expensive because it's made in the UK, and you got to pay people a living wage, and I get it. And they spend a lot of money in advertising. I mean, it's fair. But you can't just charge Games Workshop prices and make it in China. Sorry, man. That doesn't fly. So I didn't buy it. Hopefully that's not the trend that they go in and moving everything there. Aha, caught you. All he does is blow his horn, so maybe he has time to clean it, to um, polish his helmet as well. <laughs> you had about three or four Vallejo bottles where I first closed them and the very tap is bro top is broken off. You know what that means? And the only reason I know this is I've encountered some of them. 
Um, and I bet their colors that are unusual colors that don't sell well. At least that's what happened on mine. I think they just, um, it's a dry rot. You know, the, whatever properties are in the plastic in it, they just became brittle and, f and fell apart. And I've got, one of them is, one of mine is, I believe this color right here. Yeah. Yeah, it's broke off. But what color is this? Ice yellow. It's a damn worthless color that probably sat on the shelf a long ass time. Um, I This one and maybe another one. And I think it's probably a shelf life issue. You picked up something that somebody hadn't moved in a long time. Or, or maybe it's of the same, um, what do you call it, the same lot that, that this bottle was manufactured in and we got a, a bad set or something like that so yeah it could happen it could definitely happen you're not alone man you're not alone ben <laughs> yeah four seems like a lot that seems like a, a whole hell of a lot the bad thing about the vallejo ones which i've only encountered this as they get empty there's a lot more weight at the top and, and they tend to fall over real easy. So when I try to move them over, you know, they're always fumbling. They fumble around some, which I'm not a big fan of things fumbling them. I'm not naturally a fumbler. Oh, the top of the white lid. Wow. Shit. That's a that's a bigger problem because you're not getting a good seal. Damn. It probably is. It's it's brittleness in the in the plastic. It loses its um. There's a bit of a flex in them, but um, that's probably what it was. I feel like, and I'm not a science guy. Here we go again. I'm not. But when you when things are in an environment that's very dusty. Uh, I feel like these rubber things can be um, affected by them, almost like they absorb the dryness and dry out and, and die on us. So, you know, like if you leave something in the sun, right, and it's baked by the sun, it eventually will break down. It's kind of like that. Um, well, this guy's going to have the same color red boots as the Varangian Guard. And I'm going to use the same uh, sword sheath as the other guys and then this guy will be done and oh we're missing a belt we need to do a belt all right let's we're going to do the same belt color as the sword sheath so uh where is the u.s field drab <laughs> gold's out here yeah you go back inside for you know a decade actually we're going to use them on the emperor so it's not that far apart so might be from the conditions in the amazon warehouse I think mine was dark sea blue, beige red. Beige red's a weird color. Sea gray and another I can't remember. Yeah, the beige red's a weird color. It's a color, at least mine's pretty watery. I, I love Amazon, okay? And I, unfortunately, you know, if it puts brick and mortar stores out of business, I, I'm not a fan of it, but there's no brick and mortar stores anymore, you know? Um, I would go to those. I would rather go to a store and physically pick up the paint. But Amazon um, is great for a lot of things. But I haven't found really good deals on Vallejo because they want like $8 each. The shipping is included, but it's like $8. So, um, Did you guys see this the other day? I, I rebought this product and it went down in price. I know that's unheard of. That's unheard of. But this stuff right here, Tester's Dull Coat. The last bottle I have, I got rid of it. It was uh, five ninety nine. This is four fifty nine for this. So it went down in price. The first thing ever in the last thirty years to go down in price. Maybe not thirty, but five certainly. Woohoo! Buy buy stock in those things. Well, I hope they don't discontinue it. Guess so like, oh, it's made out of unsustainable materials. We got to do something else. Well, I'll, I guess I'll find another product at that point. But yeah.
You know, if I'm going to go to Walmart or Amazon, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely Amazon. I, I detest Walmart. And, I'm, and the guys that deliver stuff for Amazon, those guys are, they're hustlers. I like seeing people that deliver stuff that hustle. And not that I need to be waited on there, I'm royalty or anything, but you know, you go to the post office and I want to gouge my eyes out, you know. You go to UPS and those UPS guys hustle. Well, the Amazon guys put UPS to shame. And that's saying something. So... It's nice to see people trying to do a good job. I try to when I'm at work. It feels good to do your job well. That's what they pay you for. Now, you don't need to be a slave, you know, but it feels good to do your job correctly. But what do I know? I'm a boomer. <laughs> oh, hardly. I should have been, though. <clears throat> I should, really should have been born like 10 years before. I should have been born in 61. My sister's significantly older than me with the same mother. So I was the, oops. Viejo I get from Amazon are around two forty five each for prime delivery. Okay, that's not bad. That's about what they should be. That, that's pretty good. Well, you know the thing about Amazon is it saves, you know, they saves you from going to the store, burning gas, looking around for it, your time, asking somebody do you have it, and a person, you know, finding that person. It's just it's just better to just have them handle it, you know. And they do crazy shit like this, okay? I um, I um, I ordered a shirt the other day. I ordered a shirt the other day, and when I got it, I had heard that the shirt review um, that they run kind of small. But I'm like, I don't want to get anything. I normally wear XL, you know, um, which is basically uh, extra large is American medium. Okay, that's the medium size here in the United States. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, what the hell is this bastard doing down here? So I order it from Amazon. <clears throat> it comes in. It feels like it could be too snug after a wash. And then I had second thoughts. So I went ahead and I ordered another one in XXL. Got them both, tried them both on. And I'm like, I don't know. So I waited for the wife to come home. She's like, no, the XL one actually fits you better. So I'm like, all right, let me do a return on the XXL. And here in the United States, one of the places you can return it is at a department store called Kohl's. So imagine like a JCPenney that doesn't take as long to, uh, to check out. Because JCPenney takes forever to check out of a department store. It's a relatively new department store chain here in the United States. It might be worldwide. I don't know. Uh, Kohl's. It's like, like Helmut Kohl. It's like that. I guess he got out of politics and started a department store. Anyhow, um, they are partnered in with, um, with Amazon, supposedly, to take their returns for free. You literally just do your thing on your phone, say... I, I, do, I want to return this. And they tell you to go back to Kohl's and return it. Now, Kohl's does a thing that I think is really... I, ho hopefully, they're making money on this. Because I think there's some companies that don't have your best interest in. 
and Kohl's, I, I, I put them on the other end of the spectrum. You go and do a return for them and they give you a coupon. They have a thing called Kohl's Cash, which is basically free money. So they usually give you like five bucks. So you go and return something for Amazon and they give you a $5 coupon to use in their store. Now here's the catch, it's only good for a week. And the last time I returned something for my wife, um, I returned it and they gave me $5 cold cash. Well, I was, my wife was out of town, she was on a cruise at the time a couple weeks ago. And I told my daughter, I said, hey, I wanna look around because I don't wanna throw this money away. It's you know, and she was like impatient. I'm like, oh, I'll come back later in the week. Well, I didn't. And I forgot it was only good for a week. And the following weekend after the following one, it was no good anymore. I'm like, damn it. I just got screwed out of five bucks. Not really screwed out of anything because it didn't cost me anything. So I'm like, okay, well, I can return this shirt and then I'll do the $5 again and get that $5 that I wasn't before. Well, they screwed me. Amazon screwed me. You know how Amazon screws you? They said, don't even bother returning the shirt. So now I've got an XL and an XXL shirt of the same thing. So I guess I should try washing the smaller one. And if it misbehaves, I got a larger one to fall back on. Um, they gave me, they gave me my money back. So it was like 25 bucks. Um, they gave me my money back, so they don't return it. Now, normally Amazon, you return things unless it's like less than 10 bucks, okay? If it, so if you order something from Amazon and it's less than 10 bucks, I have heard they tell you don't bother returning, you can just keep it, because it costs them more money. Now, a sinister person, not me, uh, I'm many things, but sinister is not one of them, um, would just buy a lot of $10 things and return them and you get to keep the things for free, right? I suspect that if you do that too many times, they'll catch on to you. I'm not that way. I don't live my life that way. And I, I believe that if you do things like that, bad things will happen to you. Okay? Karma is a bitch. Um, so I do not live my life that way. But I was really surprised I wasn't going to return this item. Um, so they actually gave me credit. They gave me a $25 credit on my Amazon account and I got to keep the item, which I didn't really need the item. Uh, I'm not gonna go and sell it on eBay or some shit like that. Um, so then what I did, instead of not getting that $5 to spend in the store, I got $25 to spend on Amazon. So what I did is I ended up ordering what I would have on Amazon had I gone to the store. So. I don't know what else they're up to, but it just seems like their heart's in the right place. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, it was, it was, I was pleasantly surprised by that. And that literally just happened two days ago. And it saved me having to go to the store and burn fuel and burn mileage on my car. And you know, Helmut, Helmut Kohl was in a, oh, Helmut Hohl was in a band before he became, oh, this is just translating everything. I'll translate it for you. Helmut Kohl was in a band before he was Chancellor of Germany. You may remember Kohl and the gang. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. When are, you know, when are Germans gonna make a funny joke? I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm just razzing you. You probably, I've interacted with you enough times you're probably a pretty cool guy. I wouldn't mind having a German beer with you. And we can talk about how German beer is better than the, the stuff they have in England. Yep, I went there. Look, England's got all the toys, okay? Germany's got all the beer down. Hey, I, I buy a hell of a lot more toys than beer. I'm just saying. <laughs> and that's not to say I don't like English beer. I'm just saying. German beer is where it's at. <laughs> Kohl and the gang. That was just crazy. But I know, I guarantee there's people that buy things on Amazon return them and try to get the money back and resell them on eBay. That's just, if you go, if you go with that intent, 
bad things are going to happen to you in life. You know, that, that's just the wrong attitude to have. We would have to stop verking to make a joke. That's true. That's true. back and do a little bit of detailing I believe it was this because somehow I didn't go around the corner with this oh and the belt let's not forget the belt But can the Germans make whiskey? No. Absolutely not. Nope. Nope. And the Italians can't make beer. Absolutely not. That's like a bad joke. You just have to be honest. I mean, not everybody can be good at everything. You know? I mean, Italians got olive oil... Wine, cars, guns. What else do you want? You know? <laughs> food? No, oh, I said olive oil. Olive oil is the base of all food. So, for some of us, I have that just about every day. England is the land of toys. Everything I want comes from the UK. And I joke about all that stuff. I, I pick on all you guys. You know, we're all, we're all in it together. But there's no miniature companies in Germany that I know of. There was one in France, a poor guy passed away. Painting some of his wonderful figures right now. But you know, all the war gaming started in England. So it kind of makes sense that that's where they are. We're calling this folk we're calling this guy done. Now we can go to the flag bearer. All right, let's zoom in on this guy. I know it's not going to look that good. Things are more or less back to normal. Restaurants are open with staff who care. We're not there yet, John Peter. Our staff doesn't care. Mo a lot of staff doesn't care anymore. We just um I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't want. I don't want to talk about it. So a lot of it just makes me angry. Uh, let's see. Let's go to. Let's go in the gap here between the things. Oh, I need to not click on this because I see these lines on the. There we go. This is Rick's favorite guy. I'll have to take a picture and send it to him. He's cool. You don't get a chance to play, to paint little guys that, with horns very often. Okay, he can join the other guys. That's going to be a crowded ass stand. Let's, let's, let's see them all together. How about that? Let's see how the gang looks. And then we'll go do the flag bearer. And that only took yeah, a little bit more than an hour. And you're getting a lot of um, interference from this bright ass light that I use. So it's going to look, it looks a lot more muted in this picture than it does in real life. Boy, this is hard to do. Turn it around and.
These old glory figures, they, they dry brush really well. The armor has a lot of depth. He kind of has a big head, but I don't have a problem mixing people. There's people in real life that have a big head. You've seen it like, man, that guy's got a big head. Well, that guy just happens to be in this army. <laughs> It is. You don't get to pick. Uh, you don't get to pick how you hatch. You know. <laughs> oh man. Here, having a good time as always. If you're not having a good time doing this hobby, you're doing it wrong. All right, the flag bearer. The flag bearer. We're gonna paint this guy basically in the same colors. Uh, we're not going to do the little um, strip on the bottom with this guy. And, and the flag is going to be more than likely not purple. It's going to be a very, very, very dark blue. Uh, it might have a little bit of purple tinge to it, but it's not going to be a purple flag. Although, people tend to call things purple when they're not. I've noticed that. And I am... I am really... A attuned to colors. What is that element in DBA terms? It is a command post or a litter or a command wagon. They're all treated the same way. And it's a really interesting element. Uh, if you look at it on paper, it looks like it's a piece of shit. Like it's not a very good element. But it is basically, um, it is always a command stand and it's treated as a solid blade. So it's six versus foot five versus mounted um and it's a solid blade so it still retains the if a knight charges into it it kills the knight on a tie but the only way it can die it can't get out scored by a knight and die it needs to be doubled which is hard to do on a six five or on a tie if two foot elements are in contacting two of their edges so if you've got the element like this and you've got one unit over here and one unit over here and they're both in close combat or opposite sides or whatever it is that you have. If it's in close combat with two sides and the units tie each other, it picks up. Otherwise, you've got to double it. Now, it can't move into close combat. It can't move into overlap. So how do you fight it? You don't. You go like the Pope. You know, just you see a Pope on the hill, you're like, I don't want to deal with that guy. Why? He likes to preach a lot and my ears just can't take it anymore. So you just go somewhere else. Um, so that's, that's the gist of what it is. He moves like a solid foot. Um, it doesn't cost two pips to move. It probably should, honestly. Um, and it's just, it's just cool. It's an opportunity for, you know how people say, oh, I like doing camps because it's an opportunity to do a little diorama. I don't like doing camps. Um, because unless I have a specific look that I want to go with a camp, um, I just don't see a whole lot of point in, in doing that. I would rather make a little diorama like this. Um, Because the camp doesn't do anything. And this actually does. You move this thing around. Or you can. So that's, in a nutshell, how this unit behaves. And it's kind of weird. And every time I use it, I'm, I, I feel the need that I need to explain that to people. So that they know what they're getting into. So I'm like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Because it's an unusual element. It's an unusual element that it can do that. Um, okay. First things first. Let's get some leather brown. So because it's such a solid element, I feel the need to put a lot of guys on it. Um, so that it looks like it's trouble. So my Pope actually has eight of them on there, but there's no mounted figure on there. And the mounted guy's taking up a lot of space. So I'm going to put seven on here. This guy looks like he just has a mustache. I feel like this guy's got to be blonde. 
and give him a little blonde mustache. I like playing, I like painting the blonde hair and the red hair. It's just something different. Red's particularly interesting because you can do different variations of red. You know, strawberry blonde, things like that. It's funny, when I did 135th scale modeling, I dreaded painting the figures. And now I, lo I love painting figures. I don't know how I'd do a 135th scale. But I'll never find out. I'm not, I'm not going down that road again. Ooh, I, I'm not going to paint his arms bar barren. I'll give him a shirt so the shirt ties into the bottom one. Okay. But I love this hobby, you know? I think it's wonderful. The thing that sucks the most about this hobby is that you can't talk about it with most people on the street. They just can't. Um, I can't find people that are into history. Forget wargaming. We can at least talk about history, right? Nope. Nope, nobody cares about it. So... You know, this type of a venue, I think, keeps us from getting lonely. I don't know. I can't talk to my wife about this stuff. They don't get it. Mitch doesn't get excited about figures. So... I love this hobby. And you know, if, what's that dumbass? Thanos. If Thanos, if Thanos snapped his fingers and all 15 millimeter figures disappeared, I'd do 28s. I just don't do 28s because I'm just not going to get as many things done. But uh, I'd paint another scale, sixes, whatever. It's, it's still part of, you know, being creative and, and with a historical subject. I, I still would like it, you know. I mean, if I had showed up and played DBA and they were playing in 28 mil, I probably would do DBA in 28 mil because that's what most people were playing, you know? So, I, I, I appreciate that other people do different scales and I don't need to convert somebody from, if you're happy doing 10 mil, do 10 mil, you know? Do whatever you want. I'm a live and let live kind of person. It's definitely, definitely when it comes to the hobby. Just the fact that you're, we're on the same page doing the same kind of stuff. That's, um, that's good enough for me. Not a lot of this guy's skirt showing. Skirt, long shirt. Why is a long shirt not called alert? Because nobody asked me. So I know that American Civil War is popular in England. I don't know why. Why, why is American Civil War popular in, uh, in the UK? Now, I can see why it's popular here because people say, oh, my granddaddy came from this whatever and we fought for the Union or whatever. Or, you know, or what I like to hear is, you know, my family fought on both sides. So there's that tie-in. I'm, I'm not tied in for that very same reason. My people hadn't showed up here yet. Or my immediate family had not showed up yet here yet. And I don't really like the fashions of the time. You know.
So I'd be more likely to play English Civil War than it would be American Civil War. Not that I'm fond of Civil Wars of any kind, really. The closest to a Civil War thing I would be interested in would be something like Reconquista, you know, and that's a 800-year war, 800-year Civil War-ish type thing, you know. People joining both sides, and that's why it took 800 years. But again, I'm interested in it because it's my people. So there's a tie-in to that, you know. My ancestors. ACW figures are easy to paint and you don't have to do a lot of horses. Oh, people don't like horses, huh? Okay. I wish there was a good range of stuff for Victorian era. And I've said this before. And I don't want to do, you know... Britain versus the natives. I'm not, well, I'm not opposed to doing that. But I want to do Britain versus other European powers with the natives in between getting at each other. So, you know, I'd like to do, you know, Britain and the German versus the Germans like in 1890. Or the French or, you know, conflicts that never happened. Um, I like to daydream about that. I'll never get around to doing it. I'd probably base them individually. You could use pennies, you know. I've actually played a handful of Victorian style games like that, you know, Britain versus the natives. Always play the natives. Easy compared to Napoleonics. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I enjoy playing Napoleonics with Joel and Mitch. And this is going to sound weird. Maybe maybe it doesn't sound that weird. One of the things I really enjoy about it is, well, I don't have to paint any of this stuff. That's, that's not really actually an enjoyment part. That's like a liberating part. I can play it and not have to paint any of those things. But um, they those two guys know a lot about Napoleonic stuff. That I can just ask them. Hey, um, was Austrian cavalry any good? I mean, I can ask them stuff like that, and they kind of know. And I, I just use that as an example. You know, they know about they know about that. It seems like they those two guys know the about the Napoleonic stuff the way I know about World War II stuff. You know, and um, it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to be able to play with folks that, that know the period and are really interested in it. Somebody else mentioned to me, they sent me a message yesterday on Facebook, late, late, late. And they said, hey, did you see that they mentioned you on the Dark Shar Gamer podcast? And I said, yeah, somebody mentioned that to me yesterday on my live feed. And I went looking for it last night and I, it must be hidden in the middle of some episode. So if any of you guys have seen that, please let me know what episode it is just to see what, uh, what they said about me. Hey, what would you say about me? Hey, hopefully they were just being honest, you know? If you're being honest, you can talk about me all you want. I'm honest about everybody else. I, I expect the same treatment. <laughs> uh. 
if you guys have seen that, let me know what episode that was. Because it wasn't in, it wasn't mentioned in any of the descriptions, so it might just be something in passing. I appreciate the, the shout out. It's something else we can listen to on the way up there. We got a lot of stuff to listen to in the car. I'm really looking forward to that, actually. Really looking forward to that. So that's why you watch you know your stuff. Well. I'm not afraid to say I don't know something about, and that's another thing that you encounter just in my dealings at work. If you don't know something, say, I don't know. Don't just make up an answer to get people off the phone. I mean, we, none of us know everything, you know, we're specialized in stuff like that, you know, um, I'm not afraid of saying, I don't know something. There's a lot of things I don't know, and there's a lot of things I'm not interested in ever knowing. And point you in a different direction, you know? And there's stuff I used to know and just forgot, because I don't... It's like you're studying for a test, and you, do, you never take the test. You know, there's World War II stuff I've forgotten over the years, because... I haven't gamed it in a long time. This one guy in the note commented on a picture about something. It was a Yag Panther. And he said, hey, what's that little thing in the back? And he said, and I thought it was the place where you spit the spent casings, but I wasn't sure. So I said, I wasn't sure, you know, not like, oh, that's for such and such. If you don't know what you're talking about, man, just, you know, I don't want my credibility questioned, you know. Does Mitch laugh the whole trip? You know, he's, he's an extremely positive person. He is extremely positive. Now, he gets pissed, but I've spent maybe 12 years with him, right? He came around 2010. I've seen him pissed maybe only three or four times. And, you know, not at me, just something that happens and... He's happy all the time. Um, I'm pretty happy. I'm happy doing my hobby. I am not the most positive person all the time. You know, um, so I started to think about that and I'm wondering why that sometimes is. And I think that some of us have jobs where we're always looking for problems. We're definitely, we're definitely affected with how you grow, you grew up and you, you know, obviously your interaction with your parents and also what kind of stuff you have to do in your job. And I work with a job that constantly has freaking problems. So like one thing I really detest doing is explaining the same thing to knuckleheads over and over again. Like I, I couldn't have a job where it's like, let me give you an example. Somebody who's a lifeguard, no running, don't run on the deck. I keep having to explain the same thing to people that don't listen to you. I would go, I would go mad. I would be, I, I can't say pissed because half of you think that, it, you know, oh, I guess you're just having a drink. So, um, a lot of, I think, and this is one of those things that it's hard to quanti quantify unless you sit down and like actively think about it. I am certainly affected by my interactions with, um, and working at the same place for almost 30 years. You know, there's certain things I just don't want to do. I don't want to explain things to people that don't listen, um, over and over again. Uh, I don't want, uh, I'm not interested in arguing with folks, you know, all that kind of stuff is, is on there, but Mitch is very positive. Um, he's very, uh, predictable. I think I'm very predictable. Um, I'm not like a loose cannon. 
And, you know, we get frustrated with die rolls, but... I think, I think I handle that shit better than anybody else. I don't know. Other people are like, oh, let me switch dice or whatever. I play with people that are like uber, like Christian religious. And they are so superstitious about the freaking dice. I'm like, come on, man. Stop being so dark ages, you know? <laughs> oh. It was the latest episode. Bros and Binyan Summer Special, maybe about halfway through, I was listening to it yesterday after the stream. And if you looked at Yorkshire Gamer's YouTube site, it won't be there yet. His podcasts are on Podbean. That's where I saw him on Podbean. And appear on YouTube a few weeks later. I actually didn't know they were on YouTube. Okay, we'll check it out. Cool. Yeah, well, Yorkshire Gamer reminded me of something. I do a lot of surfing. I do a lot of surfing for miniature-related stuff to, to get inspired. And one of the Yorkshire things I remember is some guy there in their club or their group has like every ship at Jutland and they're like based and they have a little name written on them. And I, it like, it caught my attention. It caught my attention. So, um, yeah, cool. Cool. And I listened to a little bit and somebody was saying that that, the name of their podcast was a play on how they say Yorkshire in that part of the world. So I'm expecting to see, listen to things that I can't understand. I pretty much understood everything they were saying. So a lot of it is just, if you don't mumble your words, and if you don't speak excruciatingly fast and omit words in your, speak, in your speech, if it's just an accent, um, it's okay, you know? Like even I, I'll, I'll say things I wouldn't write down, you know, I'll do stuff like ain't and things, but you know, I can type an email and things like that, that are, that are, I'm not a writer, but I do a lot of writing, so to speak. So I don't misspell things and things like that. Um, but I think all of us in our speech omit things and, and use colloquialisms that we may not use if we were doing something formal. I tend to get in it. I sometimes when I do uh, my videos, not necessarily this, but like our games, I feel like I'm rushed. And, and I, I sometimes my mouth gets ahead of my brain and I'll say left when I mean right. That kind of stuff, you know. Um, I just probably should slow down a little bit. Maybe not slow down like... This is one guy that I follow. He speaks really slow and he, there's nothing wrong with him. He's really calming. I really enjoy listening to him. It's, it's like zen and shit, you know? Un café más. Be right back. Spectacular painter. His name is, um, his YouTube channel is Paul Alba. And um, he has some projects on there that I find overwhelming. He'll have like, I think he did one where he had Russian vehicles and he had literally 40 Russian vehicles in different states. I would just be like, throw them away, start over one at a time. I, I just, I would go crazy. Um, he's a phenomenal painter. Um, but I can't understand what he says. Um, he has an extremely heavy Scottish accent and he speaks kind of fast. And it was funny because um, I took, I put uh, closed captions on and the stuff that puts, that he supposedly says is hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. Obviously, it's completely wrong, you know. And, um, but he's a phenomenal painter, but I can't understand what he says most of the time. 
Um, now, if I got para dropped in Scotland for a month and listened to that, the meter and and the type of the of, of I would probably be a lot better at it, but not being exposed to Scottish people, you know. Oh, he's a phenomenal painter. I would be more than happy if my vehicles were up to that standard. And it's funny because I talked to him and he doesn't like doing figures. I'm like, I'll tell you what, I'll do your figures and you do the vehicles. We'll do a co-op we'll co on it. <laughs> and he does 20 mil, which I'm 20 mil. I'm a 20 mil World War II guy all the way. I love it for skirmish. Love it. Well, when I started, that was the scale to do. Now there's other things, but I love 20 mil. They're not that much bigger than these guys. Some of these guys are close to that scale anyways. So. Oh, I already did that one. Got it. This guy also has the red cape. But you know, not everybody can speak as as clear as the queen. <laughs> She's got it down. I know every single word she says. But a lot of it is speed, because I was listening to um, tank chats yesterday. Well, I couldn't get anybody to come on, so I put the 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 Bovington chaps with their tank chats. And the one guy, the the older guy with a mustache, whatever his name is, I can't remember right now. He has a pretty intense accent, but he speaks really slow, relatively slow. I followed him perfectly. Um, so I think a lot of it is just is speed. Watch the chat on the Conqueror. Didn't know anything about that. I thought it'd always be cool to do some kind of Cold War thing where do it in the late 50s, early 60s, so you still got the the light, medium, heavy tanks. I just cool, you know, as a from a, from a modeling standpoint, that would be pretty neat. So I like to daydream about other periods, but I don't fall for the hey, let me buy shit for it. Nope, been there. Nope. Another thing that was kind of interesting, like naval warfare, like modern naval warfare, I was, I'm like trying to figure out when was the first guided missile that was used from ship to ship? And just doing a cursory search, it seems like there was an engagement in the Six Day War that was the first time it was used. But at what point did ships have surface to surface missiles that were, you know, that went past the horizon? Because it would be kind of cool to do um, do an engagement where with navies that still had conventional guns, even though it was modern. So, like for instance, 
uh, the French battleship Jean Bart um, had a very short service life. Uh, it was reserved for many years, but it got completed just before the Suez Crisis and went down there. So I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of cool. Maybe work that into a scenario. You know, I'm a big fan of battleships. I don't care how impractical they are. I love battleships. And, um, but, you know, battleships' main guns, when, um, when there's guided missiles that go past the horizon, are kind of, you know, no fun. You know, they take the, they took, take the wind out of their sails. So, I'm wondering if there's a time period there in the mid-50s when there wasn't missiles that went past the horizon. And, um... And that's a possibility. That is a beautiful ship. I wonder what makes one car go by it's so much louder than the rest of them. This is a two-lane road on the other side. I've got a attention pond behind my house. And then there's a two-lane road, which is kind of busy. It's not crazy, but it's kind of busy. And, you know, you hear traffic if you're in the backyard, but you generally don't hear it inside the house. And I don't hear well to begin with. Which I guess explains why I'm kind of loud most of the time, but I don't have a problem enunciating. Sometimes you just encounter a vehicle that is just that much louder than anything. That one just had not sounds like it had knobby tires on it and just made a lot of noise. Soviets started deploying surface-to-surface -surface missiles in the 60s, if you remember correctly. So if you do naval combat in the 50s, like Suez, there's no guided missiles. That might be, be kind of cool. Because the Soviets had that one ship class of light cruisers, or you know, I guess they're just called cruisers at that point. I want to say there's the Sverdlov class. They made like 15 of them. Including one that was like a wreck off of Murmansk or something like that for many, many years. Um, it like ran aground and it was just sitting there kind of cockeyed at like 15 degree list or something like that and before it got scrapped. Just something different. I mean, they make models for some of these ships that never get used. You know? Suez crisis gone hot. There's one guy that I know said that would really like doing the Suez because you've got prop planes, jets, all kinds of stuff. And I told him, well, I can't be into everything. Royal Navy started fitting exosets in the early 70s as aircraft carriers were due to be scrapped and they had no other NA surface weapons. Interesting. So if I do something in the 50s, was Vanguard around back then? That'd be pretty cool. Vanguard and Jean Bart and... British had some cool cruisers. What were those? The, the Tiger. The Tiger was a post-war cruiser. 
had a big conning tower on it. I wonder if you can do, uh, what's the name of that game? Shipwreck with just surface guns. It might be, it might be boring. I don't know. Half the parts of minis. I enjoy painting the 6,000 scale uh, Japanese and Chinese fleets, even though I may never play the game. I'm just lazy. I'm lazy to go and read all the, all the rules and do it wrong. You know they make in one six thousand scale a little um, oil rigs. That's awesome for like a you know objective point. You know, gotta defend the oil rig or something like that. War for oil, literally. I need to write something down before I lose track of it. Since you guys went through the trouble of letting me know. Latest episode, Brews in the Binyard Summer Special Part 1. Okay. Brews. Shipwreck with just guns would be dull. Ships move very slowly and guns can fire six times per turn. So a lot of dice rolling with little movement. Okay, good. You talked me out of it. <laughs> you know, when I look at things now, I'm interested in, in mechanics. Um, DBA has kind of opened my eyes to what a, what a game should be fun-wise and decision-making wise. So um, this guy that does the League of Augsburg thing, who does those sailing ships, it's like a freaking wet dream. It, it, and it's a period I'm not even interested in. 1600 sailing ships. But holy shit, they look good. I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable. So anyhow, so he's coming out with some galleons or whatever, which is a period I'm interested in, you know. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, let's see what rules are out there for them. So I watched, um, there was, I came across these set of rules called Guns and Galleys, Galleys and Galleons, Galleys and Galleons by Ganesha Games. And I went on YouTube and there's a couple of people did like Rules reviews and play by play things of them and and I'm, I'm I'm watching it I'm watching it and I'm like I don't like this game already I don't have enough meaningful choices or it seems too generic or if I have to play everything it's you know I already talked myself out of it so um, and that's not something I would have done prior to DBA now it's like I want to see what the mechanics what kind of choices I have to make every turn and if they seem kind of generic. Um, then I can talk myself out of it pretty easy, which I guess is good. I don't really don't need to get involved in that, you know, but mechanics are, um, are kind of important.
So you've played um, Shipwreck. Do you like it? I have it. I have the fleets. I just... It seems like, unlike DBA where you can see everything going on, but your folks don't react to them, it seems like you can react to things that you can't see yet. You know, you could be like, oh, I'm going to roll to see to turn my radar on. Well, what, 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 what would it give you a clue to do that if the, the missiles were fired past the horizon? Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm overanalyzing and I just need to just sit down and muddle through it. But... I think one thing that's unique about the rules is that the, the range is not proportional. You've got some range bands are different than the others. Seems like that's the way it is. That's kind of interesting. Interesting take on it. Welcome, Joe. How'd they coming? Well, this is the next to the last guy done. So Emperor's next. Let's see how much shit's on him. He's going to take probably a couple hours to paint. At least I know how I want to paint him. That honestly takes the most time. I'm in good shape. I'm in real good shape. So we should get the Emperor done on this feed. And my reward, I get to paint this flag. And I know how I'm going to paint that too. So good times ahead. Good times ahead. I got half a mind not to bring this army to Historicon though. Because what if I go up there and I and they go like one and eight or something like that? <clears throat> Maybe I should just drink whiskey. That was the problem the other night. I didn't have any whiskey. <laughs> Last night I had whiskey. I had like four glasses of whiskey. We are heading out this morning, all armies packed. Really? Man, I hope you made a list. Don't forget stuff, man. Don't forget something. Don't forget something and safe travels and... It'll be great. It'll be great. It's just so, you know, it's socializing, so... What could go wrong? Shipwreck works, shipwreck works best with an umpire uh -oh, and cardboard markers representing the ships until they're detected. However, this rather defeats the object of using miniatures. Yeah. Yeah.
I'm kind of getting turned on to the idea of playing unbalanced games and then just everybody plays both sides. You know, you play it twice kind of thing. So I want a game that's not really long. So you got enough time to play it both ways. And don't necessarily worry about whether you win or lose. Or maybe compare how your wins and losses were against somebody else's. Because honestly, balanced, unbalanced battles are some of the funnest battles. You know? And sometimes, you know, if you know you've got a more powerful force, you kind of get lazy and don't get creative. Which results in you getting your ass beat. <laughs> you know, so there's that. This is a thumb, isn't it? I guess it is. Let's go back and paint a thumb on there. There we go. I have lost games before because I'm like, I don't need any terrain. And because I didn't use terrain, you know, if you're better at using terrain than the other guy, put terrain down. Okay, before we do the boots, we need to do the flag. Oh, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. I'm getting excited about the flag. I'm like, flag, flag, flag. All right. Um, and it's a relatively simple design, so I should be able to paint both sides. Man, I'm actually cold. I'll take things you never hear come out of my mouth. Let's drop this in two. Problem with simulating modern aircraft is that aircraft can move 30 times faster than ships and some missiles 100 times faster than the ships. Yeah, it's almost like, do you get through the defenses? I had a friend of mine growing up that was really into Harpoon. And Harpoon, ships really didn't move very fast. And we were playing with 12400 scale ships, so it was really stupid. With the 6000s, it's a little bit better. But... Again, it's an excuse to paint the ships, you know, and um, and play with the stuff that you painted more than anything else for me. I want to paint some of those British ships with the... I don't know if they still do that, but they used to have their deck with green. I think that's awesome, you know. I think it's awesome. But honestly, if I wanted to paint ships, I'd probably go and paint some 2400 scale that work with Sea Krieg. Joe knows how to run Sea Krieg. I've played it before, and then I don't have to worry about running the game. Joe can just run it. Hey, I just created some work for you, Joe. Joe games with the uh, the head honchos of Sea Krieg all the time, so he knows it really well. I knew Sea Krieg 4 really well. Um, and... Um, we played that a lot. And really, my only gripe with the system is that it can lead to unfinished games. Because it has a lot of detail, and I love the detail. I am a rivet counter, no doubt about it. I can deal with the modern stuff, not having as much detail. But if you're talking like World War I, World War II, yeah. I want to know where the shell lands, and you know, does it penetrate the armor, and all that kind of stuff. Sure, no problem. Okay. Excellent. 
Excellent. Excellent. We'll talk. We will talk. And we can film that shit too. Green is no longer used. What? Is nothing sacred anymore? Decks are gray nowadays. I think it changed in the 80s. Ugh. Nothing sacred anymore. Okay, this guy needs a tuft on his helmet. I think I'm going to go with white. Let's give this guy a white tuft. I want to order some of those tumbling dice miniatures stuff and, you know, do stuff like those two battleships that the, that the Italians had that carried frickin', frickin' troops that had no armor, Italia and Lepanto. I think they were like, it could carry like 10,000 troops and they got like no belt armor, like <laughs> and have those guns that 17.7 inch guns that fire once a season. <laughs> just crazy. I just mainly just want to paint them. You know, I just want to paint them. <laughs> crazy shit like that. I had three to five hundred ships at one point. And many of them were painted. Many. Like over 150 of them. Not by today's standards. Not by the quality of how they're painted today. But I paint now. And uh, that's why I got rid of them. And a lot of them were like, like model kits. Like this one was half started and I put the guns on this one. And it was just overwhelming. I, I, I can't process that. I can't, you know, I started off on the wrong foot. Now, the good news is when I bought them, when I sold them, they went in, up in so much, they went up in price so much that I got my money's worth back out of them. But if I had them now, I still wouldn't have used them. And shit, we haven't played naval stuff. And, Probably since about 1997. Or I haven't run naval stuff since about 1997. And that's all we used to do. All right. We're giving this guy a blonde mustache. Right. Did you see a Twitter thread about the Italian later British flamethrower ships and submarines? No. A flamethrowing submarine? There's a bad idea. No. Is it... Are they new ships? No, I didn't see that.
All right, the shield. <coughs> What's the theme on the Varangian guards? White rim, red. I may not do it red. I may do this one different. From World War II. You think both were scrapped? Flamethrower ships. No, I don't know that. That does not ring a bell. And I know my World War II ships. And I've got all the Conways too. Which, I mean, that was my first love of ships. So. All right, let's have some, let's have some water. That was my favorite theater in, in World War II. Because both sides have aircraft. Um, big battle wagons, cruisers. You know, you can have fleet actions. You can have convoy battles. I mean, hell, both sides ran convoys. Super, super interesting. The Italian ships are beautiful. The British ships are have all kinds of cool history and camouflage schemes and What's not the like? All right. All right, let's find this, um, the inspiration for this flag. I'm gonna look in a couple places. Just can't get to this. This damn couch is always in the way. All right. Let's go to these two. I think it's in one of these. Not that one. That's Normans. Not the Normans. This is the first thing I saw. This particular, these particular, this particular drawing right here. And maybe that's A Byzantine standards, old style bandon, and now become the imperial standard. Twenty-seven A showing an example of about eight fifty-six. Many variants of the crucifix or cruciform pattern be found, or cruciform pattern to be found in contemporary art. The other principal standard which accompanied the emperor was an icon which instead of a crucifix bore an image of the Blessed Virgin. I'm not painting a Blessed Virgin on there. I, I don't have 20 hours to do that. Um, this was the famous Lady of Blachernay, still recorded, recorded as late as 1204, when together with the imperial standard it was captured by the crusaders from Alexius V. At that time, it was described as all of gold and charged with precious stones. Mm -hmm. Standards are normally shown in contemporary sources as shades of red, blue, or purple, sometimes green, often gold decorated. 
Okay, we already have the tail. We already have the tail banner that I made the other day for the um, the cavalry commander. All right, so this wasn't very useful. Um, so the other inspiration was this one picture, which I'll post on here. The submarine would release, release fuel surface a little way and then shoot a spurt of flame to ignite the oil slick. Interesting. Royal Navy's idea was to put small flamethrowers on ships as an anti-aircraft device. That's got a bad idea written all over it. That just sounds like, uh, what, the discouraged low-flying planes? What could go wrong? Let's just sail through this ship, this sea of fire. What could go wrong? <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Let's, let me go back to my Pinterest. And I will show you this artwork of this excellent fellow that... Um, he did some things on, on here that I found particularly inspirational. There's some, there's some brilliant folks out there. There's some brilliant folks out there. And we're going to go ahead and save this. I don't know how accurate this is. I like it though. And that's what we're going to base our idea for this standard on. Let's go to Properties. Thank you. And then we're going to Browse. It should take me right to the same menu. There it is. And we're going to open this. And we're going to go Done. And let's open this up. And the one we're looking at is the one that he's actually carrying. Now, it's not going to have tails on it. And I'm actually not going to go purple. And, and only because there's going to be so much purple on the freaking general, the general's horse. I don't want it to be purple standard also. Um, sounds even worse than the unrotated projectile. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the little emblem that we're going to do. Okay. We're going to do that little emblem in the corner. Rick Cundiff. Welcome. They spent... 27 million on the host. They should have just nuked it. Looks awesome now. Agree, 2018 19 was not nice. Are you going to, you're going to Historicon, aren't you? You may very well be the only person that has retired and goes to conventions more often than when he was working. And I know that sounds strange it, because that's what you should be doing. You should be available to go to conventions more often. But I know so many people that, oh, I'm going to go to so many more shows when I'm not working. And then I'm like, oh, I can't go to this. I don't have money for that. I'm like, well, then you shouldn't have retired. When I retire, if I ever do, I'm going to do this shit more than I'm doing it now. Okay? Um, if not, I'm doing it wrong. You know? You know, I don't... I don't need a ton of money. I just want to maintain my lifestyle, which is, I don't have a crazy lifestyle, you know? I don't want a crazy lifestyle, but I need to be, I should have more hobby time, not less. And there's so many people that are like, they retire and they don't travel, they don't go anywhere. Immediately, not like they retired and 10 years down, they have health issues and they can't travel. I get that, you know, we can't control when those things come and, and haunt us, but well, I won't go to the host at all, period, until Historicon's there again, and it's not there this year, so... Hopefully, it'll never go back. Now, Fredericksburg, I like because it cuts down on our trip a lot, but I don't know that it's going to go back there. I think it got turned into a damn casino, too. What is this, what is this casino thing? Are there that many people that gamble? I'm honestly surprised.
Well, I didn't like the host, but I'll tell you this. The area that we played DBA in the host is probably the best place in the host because the lighting was decent and it wasn't too hot. Although the last time we went, we had like garage freaking doors. That, you know, it was just, it was just weird. Okay, so with that color standard, we're probably going to want a lighter, lighter colored pole. All right, so here goes. So what color am I doing? Let's grab the darkest of blues. We could do better than dark Prussia blue. I mean, we could just make it darker. It may, that may be the darkest one I have. Do we have a Games Workshop color that we could use, maybe? Don't I have a crazy, a crazy old Games Workshop color? That's a dark, dark, dark ass blue. Dark ass blue. What's what color is this? This is probably ultramarines, isn't it? I don't I don't think I've got. Nauseating blue. Let's try that. <laughs> Lamp at a room in the old days was great. It was at least cool where we were. I don't think the noise level was too bad. Well, this thing's not budging. Maybe it's dead. Hmm. See if we can do some necromancy here. I don't need very much. Oh, there's life left in it. That's a weird color. You know what? I actually like this color for the emperor. Right. Let's um let's do a couple things. I found needles are great for mixing things because stuff doesn't stick to them. Oh, this stuff's pretty solid. All right. Let's not do too much of this or we're going to have a different type of a problem. Let's drop two drops in. Ah, fuck it. Did three. All right. This is like the color of Grimace off of Ronald McDonald. I don't have very many good purples. Purples are weird. Purple, like this is a good purple color. Most col most, most purple colors are like this. They're like kind of lame. I got to mix like blue or something into them. So we're going to use this for the emperor, I think. And his whole horse is going to be like that. All right, so where's that Prussian blue? That's what we're going to roll with for this guy. Just not a very rich color. Color is not very rich. All right, let's get this will work. Man, eh, this is actually too nice a brush for this. All right, we're going to cover the entire thing. This may not work. This may not work, but we gotta color, cover this in a dark color anyway, so this isn't really wasted.
Now, let's do a little experiment over here on the side. I think this color will be fine. I think this color will be okay. It's strange to paint a flag that is white metal. All right, we got a border, we got a cross, we got little circles. Let's start putting some. Let's start putting some of these things on there. So we're gonna do gold, and we're probably gonna use gold, gold on there. 